Hey guys, today is a work day. So the hat's back on. Haven't gotten my new one shipped to me yet. Should be on its way. But today we are going to be talking drip irrigation. I have a couple of other videos that show my full system and how I set it up. I'll link those down below. But today I'm gonna be adding to that system for our new edible landscape. And so I thought it might be cool to bring you along in case you were worried that maybe drip might be a little more difficult than you were anticipating or would wanna take the trouble to do. Or maybe you think if I set up a little bit, a tiny drip system just to try it out, how difficult is it to expand? I'm gonna show you how easy that is today on this video. All right, so we're starting right here at the, the water source and I've got a uh, four station timer and this timer feeds the vegetable garden and the area around the gazebo and chicken coop. The rest of the uh, backyard and then the front yard are on some wise orchard timers. So the problem I have with the far side of the driveway where the new um, edible landscape is gonna go is that there's no way from the front yard to get water over there. I tried to tunnel under the driveway with one of those water nozzle things and it didn't go more than a foot. So what I'm gonna do is sp splice into the drip hose that feeds the chicken coop and the gazebo because that's kind of a small area. And I'm gonna have to take it around the house through the half inch tubing to the front yard. So I'll show you how I hook that on and then we'll go into the front yard and hook everything up and, and really set it up out there. I'm going to show you an area of the garden that I have never had on camera before. It's a very special, very sacred area to me, top secret, but I love you guys so much, I just wanna share it with you. So if you've ever seen any of my videos and wondered what was behind those turquoise doors, now's your chance to find out. So we're gonna walk back there and I'm gonna you know, give you a, a peek into a special area for me. Let's go. Okay, so maybe I oversold it just a little bit. It's pretty much the junk drawer of the backyard. Am I the only one that has one of those? Please tell me in the comments that I'm not. But this is basically the thoroughfare from the front yard to the backyard. And so that's where the drip tubing is gonna need to travel through. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you here where I'm gonna splice into the gazebo jungle. And I'm actually gonna show you a little behind the scenes and let you know that nothing here is perfect. In fact, it's kind of like a movie set where things in the front look fine, but then you go behind the scenes, it's not quite the same. So I'm spilling a little bit of the magic here. Okay, so you can see over here is the gazebo. We're back behind. And as I pan over, you're gonna see that really cool. We've got some aerial roots here and some lava rock until you get to about this point right here. And all of a sudden we've got a crate with a styrofoam container with all manner of ferns and philodendrons growing right out of it. Yep, that's pretty much the back behind the scenes version of my backyard. I'm an artist, I never claim to be an engineer or a landscape designer. Okay, but you can see from the faucet over there, that timer, the drip, the half inch drip tubing comes through here and there's little quarter inch drip tubes that go off and feed all the gingers and stuff. And so right here as it starts to turn the corner, I'm going to attach this half inch to go to the front yard to this piece here. Now to do that, all I need to do is just cut this open Oh, I just broke my scissors. And I'm gonna attach a T. So this is gonna continue this line and this line will come off toward the front yard. And it's just pressure fit. So you just push it in until you can't push it anymore. And then do the same thing on the other end. And be careful not to get dirt inside the open end. Okay, 
Now the front yard tube goes right in. You can't get much easier. So now if we follow this tube around, it's gonna go through here. It's gonna go right here. I'll hide this, I'll bury it or whatever. But right on through, right on through. And then I fed it through this hedge all the way over to the bed where we're gonna be working. So let's head over there. All right, so we're at the new edible landscape bed. The tube comes out from the hedge and it's gonna go straight along the back of this bed, along this edge, and then another tube across the front. And I'm gonna let you know why in just a minute when I set it up. I didn't do that in the backyard beds and I was further researching after I had it set up back there and found that the distribution of water is better if you have each drip line, this will make sense in a minute, attached to two different sides of the half inch hose. I keep all my drip stuff in a little tote like this just so it's always there and I just grab the tote and head out to wherever I need to use it. So I showed you the half inch tubing, that's what we've been using. And this is if you need to take something from here to another spot. Um, and then have maybe a dripper on the end of it. That's what this is for. And then this is drip tube. So every six inches along the tube, there's a drip emitter. And so in my back beds, I have those lined up. Um, I think there's four or five per bed that go the length of the bed. And I'm gonna do that the same way here from front to back. I don't really think it matters which way it's running, um, unless you're having a row and then maybe a space in another row, then obviously you'd want it to run down the row. But in this bed, I just want kind of full coverage. So the first thing we need to do is fit the half inch tubing to this bed. And so that means putting in some elbows at the corners. So let's do that first. And by elbows, I just mean these. You could just let it curve around this corner, but I think it's neater and it kind of stays in place better on the whole bed if you put elbows. And it's the same process as we did in the backyard. Just the compression fitting. If you have arthritis or something, or just want to make it easier on yourself, you could dip these in um, some boiling water or really hot water from the microwave and it will soften them up a little bit. When you get to the end of the line where you want to cut it off, leave about six inches further than what you would uh, want. And we're going to use one of these to close the end off, to end the line. So you basically slip it on past where you want it, fold this down, and put it in the second hole and then slide this up. And that virtually crimps the line and ends it. All right, let's take a look along the back. So it's gonna come into the bed from the hedge. I've got an elbow there to take it across. And the reason it doesn't go back against the back is I'm gonna have a one foot wide path that just goes along the back. So we get to this corner, elbows this way. This corner, elbows this way, and then we've got the end piece on there. So now we're ready to hook the quarter inch drip line to the half inch drip tubes. And we need a couple of things for that. We need the drip line. We need these barbed connectors. I'll show what they look like. So let's start with the barbed connector. And what we're gonna do is kind of unwind enough to go across the bed from hose to hose. And then we're gonna stick the connector into the end of this quarter inch tube. So it looks like this. Hopefully it's focused on that. So now we gotta get this into the half inch tube. And to do that, we use a little hole punch. Now they have fancier ones that cost more, but this one works just fine. I have these bricks here just to hold them down until they kind of get into shape. 
You can also use landscape staples. And I'm gonna go about every eight inches. But I'm gonna start closer to the end so that we've got coverage in this area here. So wherever you wanna poke it in, you just take the hole punch and pop a hole in there. And then it's just a matter of pushing it in. You'll hear a pop when it's connected. We're gonna run this tube down parallel with the edge and it's gonna hook in to this one exactly the same way. So now I'm doing this about the same distance as from the other side. Here's a click and it's in. So from one end all the way to the other. And now I just have to repeat that exact same process maybe 10 or 15 more times and then I'll check back in with you. All right, take a look. I have the bricks right now holding them down. The sun is going to soften up all the tubing and kind of keep them lying straight. And by tomorrow, I should be able to take the bricks away. You can also use landscape staples, which I might, just to keep them in place. You put mulch on top and you kind of don't know where they go. So uh, this whole thing took me, the tubes going back and forth took me about 25 to 30 minutes. So not long at all, and I know I've done this before, but it's been a while. So, you know, maybe it'll take you an hour. I will tell you, it's going to be the best hour you ever spent because it's the best thing you can do for your garden. I've talked to many of you, you've commented and told me that you've done this, and other than watching my channel and subscribing, it's been the best thing you've ever done in your entire life. <laughs> so I think the only thing left to do is turn on the water and see if it works. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. It's station four. explosions. It's going to take the water a little bit longer to get out here. Okay, so we may have a kink in the line, so I'm just going to go from the backyard to the front yard and just check because probably somewhere in these hedges as I was feeding it through, it got kinked up. So I'll be right back. Yep, that's what it was. Yep. I'm telling you, it's easier than installing sprinklers, PVC, anything like that. So if you've been hesitating like I did for several years, don't do it any longer. It'll be so nice not to have to go out and water or worry about watering too much or too little. It's all adjustable and it does it for you. I got a question once before about the brand that I use and there's a couple different brands, Dig and I don't remember the other one. And someone said they had problems um, mixing the brands, that they had some leaks, things didn't fit properly. I haven't had that issue. So I would love to put a link um, to all the products that I use, but I just I go to the, the garden center and see what they have. If it's Dig brand, which is pretty popular, um, I'll, I'll put the other one on the screen. I'll, I'll go look and see. But if it's one of those two brands, I can 
tell you that I haven't had any problem mixing them, but if you can find all in one brand, I guess that would be best no matter what. I just never really paid attention to it and never had a problem. If you have any questions on you know, some of the details on setting up a drip system from the beginning, especially hooking it to the tap, hooking it to the timer, things like that. I'm going to link the other two videos I did on drip down below. And between these three videos, you really should know everything you need to know as a beginner to get started. One note is on one of those videos, um, I was recommending Wise Orchard timers and uh, we even did a giveaway. I have since taken back that recommendation, not because the products are bad, because I'm still using both of mine and I know a lot of you uh, purchased them, but there were a couple of my viewers who had a bad experience um, trying to get the product to work. And that wasn't such a bad thing because that could always be user error, but the company never contacted them back. I contacted the company on their behalf and I never got an answer either. So. I no longer recommend Wise Orchard, but um, there's plenty of other great brands out there. If you learn something from this video, as always, give me a thumbs up. It pushes this video out to a wider audience and definitely helps support the channel. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time.